Our brain is spectacular and fabulously put together. When we are born, the brain is not yet fully developed, and during the first full year of life, the brain will grow almost twice as big. New connections are created in record time. We may say that it is the foundation of the brain which is now being built. More advanced brain development is to be built on this, so it is important that the foundation is solid. We can help the child with building the foundation because the construction is influenced by experience. Connections that are used often become stronger. Those that are used less become weaker. That is why we say that the brain is user dependent. What the child experiences daily is what matters the most for the development of the brain. And to build a solid brain, it needs repetition, safety, and calm everyday experiences. Newborn children withstand much less stress than adults because they have an underdeveloped and, at the same time, a very sensitive alarm system. It helps to protect us from danger and can be triggered by intense stimuli. When the alarm goes off, the baby needs help turning it off. Here, the caregiver has an important role. By helping the baby regulate its alarm system, the baby will withstand more and more stress over time without triggering the alarm. Parents want the best for their children. Infancy is a phase where many parents are also more vulnerable than before, and negative emotions like frustration and despair can more easily emerge. This is quite normal because having children is a big change in life. Anger often comes when parents feel stuck or powerless in a situation. Anger is a normal feeling that we all have. The question is not whether we get angry, but rather what makes us angry and whether we have control over it. Parents may be surprised by the power and unpredictability of their own anger. It is therefore important to know that they can get help talking about and mastering their own anger. We know that violence can occur in all families, also against children, and that the youngest children are most at risk. There are different types of violence. Physical violence is to cause pain or bodily harm. For example, pinching, tugging, pushing, flicking, punching, kicking, and intense shaking. Intense shaking is very dangerous for the baby. When you quickly pull on the child's upper body, the head will lag behind and then get a strong pendulum-like movement. This can greatly damage the brain, and in a worst-case scenario, it can kill the child. If the child has been shaken for more than one second, it should be examined by a doctor. Psychological violence is to harm, scare, or offend the child without being physical. Examples include name-calling, ridicule, embarrassment, threats, and ignoring the child's needs and feelings. The alarm system will be activated in the same way by psychological violence as by physical violence. It is also harmful to live in a family where violence occurs between others, even if the child is not directly exposed to violence themselves. What happens to a baby experiencing violence at home? When feeling unsafe, the brain goes into alarm mode and gets busy protecting itself from danger instead of exploring the world and learning new things. The baby will look to its caretakers for comfort, but what happens when it is actually the caretaker who is threatening? Where should the baby go then to find comfort? In such a situation, the baby will not get help reducing its fear and turn off the alarm. An alarm, which is activated again and again, can eventually have difficulties turning itself off completely. It can get stuck on repeat. A hypersensitive alert can make a child's development derail in different ways. An important development task in the first year of life is learning to trust others. This task may be disturbed if you feel unsafe at home. It can cause a hole in the foundation, making it difficult to create good relationships with others later in life. The development of emotions can be affected by a hypersensitivity <clears throat> alarm and a fragile foundation. It can also weaken the development of cognitive abilities. Wow. 
crying is normal and means that your baby is trying to tell you something. The way crying is met forms the foundation for the child's self-esteem. Am I important enough to have my needs met? Does what I am trying to signal make sense? Do I usually get pleasure or annoyance from those around me? It can be difficult to keep calm when nothing seems to help. Keep in mind that it is the understanding you show for your child's emotions and your loving attempts to comfort them that are the most important for the child's development, not to stop the crying in itself. If you feel that the frustration or the anger is about to take over, it is important to have a plan for how to deal with the baby in the safest way possible. Put the child down safely and take a break to calm yourself down. Go out and inhale some fresh air while counting down from 10. The break must not be too long. Notice your thoughts and feelings. Negative feelings usually come from negative thoughts. This is not working. I'm a bad mother. I'm losing my mind. I have to sleep. I can't even calm down my own child. I'm useless. These thoughts show up automatically and they are neither useful nor realistic. By being aware of your own mindset, you can instead give yourself positive, helpful thoughts. It can be soothing for both yourself and your child if you say these thoughts out loud. Your stomach hurts. You need me to be here for you. I'm stressed. It's natural. It will pass. You need my patience, so I'll keep calm. It's not just babies who need comfort and support, adults do as well. Don't hesitate to seek support if you feel that you need it.